Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's episode of Nether War, Southside Blues. Thank you for joining us for your weekly dose of superhero shenanigans. My name is Alex, and I will continue to be your sort of humble game master for this series. I remember Catherine <laughs> called me out last week. I don't yeah. think it was me. I think it, was it wasn't Catherine. Andy. It was Andy who called me out? Oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. Not everything negative said about you was me. Oh, oh wow. Just wow. most of them. Man, I see somebody's been typecast. <laughs> <laughs> it's a thing around here, you know. Oh. Yeah. Are we really <laughs> playing Nether War if I'm not getting my chops busted? <laughs> um, are you really GMing if you're not getting your chops busted? No. Exactly. No, you're not. <laughs> Uh, tonight we will be playing Mutants Masterminds, the world's greatest superhero RPG, which is produced by Green Ronin Publishing. It is a D20 system that focuses on exciting superhero action with a character creation system that offers unlimited customization options when creating your superhero. Uh, one thing I also really enjoy is the use of hero points that encourages players to really push their limits. Um, you know, they can be used for rerolls, player scene editing, and even modifying or improving a character's powers in a pinch. Hero points are earned by leaning into genre tropes, acting heroically, good role playing, jokes I think are funny, suffering setbacks just like superheroes and other media, and from you, the audience. If you like uh, or if you follow or subscribe to uh, the channel during our stream, you have one free hero point that you can give to whoever you want to on the cast. Or me, if you would prefer. Uh, uh. Uh, we have gathered some amazing heroes tonight. Say hi, heroes. Hi, hi, hi heroes. heroes. I want to give everyone a chance to tell us a little bit about themselves, the character they will be playing, where else we can find them, and have them answer my question of the day. The question of the day is, who is your favorite musician, and what is your favorite song by them? Starting with Kevin. <sighs> oh, man. Oh, well, I'm Kevin. I'll answer these questions first, you know, stuff I know. Uh, so I'm Kevin. I'll be playing Overdrive tonight because I am the Seth Rogen of Speedsters, and so that's what I do. No, uh, I'm here for Mutes and Masterminds Monday. Uh, I have a hectic schedule, uh, and of course they've got a good cast on other shows, so I'm good there. Uh, but you should check those shows out if you get a chance. Um, and this is a hard question. I like, I like music. I like a lot of songs. I like a lot of artists. Uh, my genre tends to run hard rock and heavy metal, but uh, I have little tidbits here and there all over the place. Uh, we were talking about the Cold War last week, and so I'm old enough to remember when 99 Luft Balloons was a big hit. Oh. And like kids today just don't get like, this was about nuclear holocaust, everybody. <laughs> um, you know, so it's a nice teachable moment. I don't know, man, it's just, I was just strolling through the uh, Iron Maiden archives in my collection. Now I'm rolling into Metallica. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's rock on. I don't have a favorite. I couldn't tell you. Jonesy, over to you. Rock on. Hi everyone. Uh, I am Jonesy. I am uh, uh, playing Mortis, the Living Dead guy. Uh, uh, tonight's game. Uh, he is a guy stuck somewhere between the lands of the living and the lands of the dead. Thanks to a old artifacts stuck in his chest uh i am um, also you can find me here on tuesday nights normally uh next this not this week we have a special one shot uh follow-up game for call of Cthulhu, but uh a week from tomorrow we'll be back with uh, season one episode one of our new blue rose game so i'm super excited about that um favorite musician i don't know um i go through phases don't really have a favorite. I, I prefer songs. I got, I've got burned by too many musicians and bands I've liked. <laughs> <laughs> that were I've I've loved long enough that they've gotten bad. Um, we're talking to you, Axel Rose. <laughs> so I guess I can say um, who I'm listening to a lot a lot lately is a band called Poets of the Fall. And they have a song called Carnival of Rust that I really like. And they also they're more like a, a European goth industrial type band. So, Jonesy, you were the only other person I have met who has listened to Poets of the Fall, and I appreciate that very much. Poets of the Fall, Within Temptation, yeah. Heavy rotation on my my Pandora playlist right now. Um, hi, I'm Kat. I'm playing Centuria. Um, 
but traumatized insane centuria so not the one that you're used to you've just you know, read the mm -hmm. book um i lost my train of thought so i don't know what i was going to say next so i'm just going to answer the question um <laughs> i like musicals i'm very musical oriented unfortunately i can't sing but it's fine um my favorite artist would have to be Ben Flat from uh, Dear Evan Hansen and other things. And my favorite song by him is You Will Be Found from Dear Evan Hansen. Uh, on to Andy. Hi, I'm Andy. I'm here for Mutants Masterminds Mondays. I will be back tomorrow for our Call of Cthulhu game. You can also find me on our YouTube channel for my StoryForge episodes. We put up a new one for the Blue Rose Age system last week for character creation with that, so if you're interested in that, uh, you can go check that out. kind of ties in a little bit with what the channel has going on with next week's premiere. Um, other than that, I'm going to be playing Resonant, our resident gem mage. And, you know, yeah, I'm going to agree with both Kevin and Jonesy here in that I like music and I like specific specific songs and I will like the band that makes that song um, but I don't really just I don't really have like a favorite musician that I that I have to follow um, a band that gets a lot of play and I listen to a lot of stuff that's similar to that is a band called Starset um, which I actually yes! believe got their start here in Columbus actually and uh, but a song that really gets me kind of going when I need a pick me up is uh, "When Legends Rise" by Godsmack. So, Ooh, that's a, that, that's a good yeah. crank it too. Yes, that one is a that's a good one to, to get the motor going again. So, Calvin, on to you. All right. Um. So yeah, my name is Calvin. Hello. Uh, I am playing Bowman, who I have made into a very grim and gritty Green Batman character, which I'm having <laughs> a lot of fun with. Uh, I get to name everything bow something or arrow something, which um, <laughs> it makes it easy to name my powers. I'll say that. <laughs> um, as for me, you can find me here on Mondays, as well as on the Win With Dice YouTube channel. Uh, every Wednesday, we upload sort of like weekly uh, GM tip videos, as well as just RPG content in general. Uh, this month, we've been doing a lot of stuff with the Lancer Mech RPG. Uh, we've got a couple of really cool episodes coming up to finish up uh, what ended up being a Lancer month for us. So that'll be a whole lot of fun if you're into that game. Um, you can go check those episodes out, uh, as well as a stream that we recently did. You can go check out the VOD for that. I uh, had a lot of fun with it. Uh, as for the question of the day, a musician that I like, I was trying to, I just went back to my music playlist and I was like, oh my gosh, how did I not think of this immediately? So <laughs> um, I apparently listened to a whole lot of like power metal mostly. Um, and there's some new, there's some yeah. stuff that I've been, yeah. There's some stuff that I've fallen into recently. I had an obsession with Blind Guardian uh, towards the end of last year and Beast in Black towards the beginning of this year. But I got a shout out to Glory Hammer, my all time favorite power metal band. Um, I'm, I was trying to think of like my favorite song by them, but every album is like its own epic fantasy or science fantasy tale. So I can't think of a personal favorite one. Uh, I'm a big fan of, I don't know, like, I, like, I, like I'm looking at their their tracks and every time I think I look at one, I'm like, oh no, but I love this one too. Oh no, I love that one too. So I don't know. I can't think of a single favorite one. Uh, maybe Legendary Enchanted Jetpack. That one's pretty good. Or Power of the Laser Dragon Fire. That one's also really good. So I don't know. I can't think of a single favorite song. But I'm just I love... Saying... Oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'm just gonna say Glory Hammer in general. Um, their most recent album, really like it too. Although the lead singer is on other bands, he was in a pirate metal band that inspired a whole Pathfinder character for me. So I guess that guy. And also, pirate metal is a thing. <laughs> wow. Pirate metal as, is a good thing. As, as a side note, Mortis's favorite band is Judas Priest. Mm. <laughs> oh, I should have had you all answer in character too. Uh. Oh. Do it in character. <laughs> no, let's get the episode started. <laughs> yeah, I would Centuria not know. Centuria doesn't remember music, sorry. Centuria listens to David lullabies at night. <laughs> Centuria doesn't know this this timeline's music mm -hmm. anymore. 
different in her realm. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm going to say the same thing that everybody has said, and I have a lot of trouble picking a top of all time, even though I'm the one who came up with the question. I've had like yeah. the last yeah, three hours to think about it. Yeah, you... Um, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I checked my Spotify top tracks of all time, and apparently Big Iron is my number one song of all time. But not the Marty Robbins version, the Christian Larson version. Which is kind of like a blend between the Johnny Cash and the... Um, Marty Robbins version. And my number one artist of all time is Elvis Presley, according to Spotify. So, uh, Well, um, I mean, you, d- you did, you know, costume him up as a Halloween one, so. Yeah. I went to a wedding. <laughs> so yep. Elvis once, too. <laughs> so that was fun. Yeah, my top five are Elvis Presley, Anthony Warlow, Big Bad Voodoo Daddy, <laughs> the Broadway cast recording of Body and Clyde, and Jim Croce. So... I just need to listen to your playlist. It's drunk. Don't go there. It's a dark place. <laughs> I'm over here. Now I'm over here. Yeah, now we've I'm got over Disturbed, here. Glenn Campbell, Panic at the Disco, Sam mm-hmm. Cooke. There's a whole bunch of stuff. I listen to everything. I love music. It's Music is the way we color time in space is, how I, is what I tell people. Um, so yeah, I guess without further ado, we can go ahead and get started. Last week on Another War, our heroes attended the opening of the Elders exhibit at the Freedom City Super Museum, only to have their formal event interrupted by the Factor Four. After a brief scuffle, the group chased off the villains, but not before they captured the prize, a Bloodstone of Vaca. This was one of a set of five that can funnel destructive power into all sorts of nasty spells once the set is reunited. After investigating the museum for clues, they also got a call that Freedom City University was broken into, where another bloodstone was being examined. The group managed to discover that it was taken by Dr. Aidsos homunculi, so the race is on as two groups of supervillains are trying to track down these five bloodstones. They did manage to track the three homunculi using Davy's sense of smell, at least until the three split, one heading west, north, and south. Uh, The group decided to head south, hoping to protect Southside from additional damage and to capture the homunculus going after the Factor 4. They spotted Pyre heading this way as well, so Centuria flew up and knocked him down with a parking meter. They interrogated him and found out that the Factor 4 was working alongside Nightfire, an old enemy of Mortis. Resonant separated the connection between the two villains, but suffered some psychic feedback that threatened to kill her. We rejoin our heroes as they're standing in the penthouse hideout, recovering from that psychic attack um, from Nightfire to Resonant. Is Resonant still on fire? Or her eyes, rather, uh, whatever the fire situation was? Uh, she does not appear to be. Oh, okay. She's still standing? Did she fall down? Oh no, I'm fairly certain she's collapsed to her feet <laughs> and basically is holding her head with her hands. And just trying to make some semblance of uh, sense of what the heck just happened to her. And she's going to look up at Pyre and still kind of be in that whole, oh my god, everything hurts uh, phase. And she's just going to say, well, mm, you're welcome for not being dead. I'm sure I'd be okay. Like, he, he set you on fire, right? Uh... That's just the way it came out. That was enough psychic feedback to basically churn my brain. Mm. Uh, you need a glass of water? <laughs> Hydrate. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. <laughs> Resin's gonna give overdrive a little bit of a side eye. No, like I'll be okay. Just give me a couple of minutes here. Okay. <sighs> and I can get you some water. Come on. Yeah, it's real Hold. quick for him. That's always good for. Him. Hey, there's no NPCs here. Quite. You. Pyre is here. <laughs> uh, I'll just pull over like a chair or something for uh, for resident to sit in instead of on the floor. Yeah. She, she'll give you a nod, but she doesn't look like she quite has the strength to kind of pull herself up at the moment. She's just still trying to co- collect everything and just kind of. You you see some of the some of the burns are are slowly knitting themselves back to to normal flesh not being as burned as they were. It just takes a little bit of time. See, fast guy, she's got cool powers. Mm. Well, she's not gifted with your ability to make douchey comments, that's for sure. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's not a superpower, that's a hobby. 
Mm. How nice for you. Do you have any hobbies you don't suck at? Just curious. Alex can't think of anything witty to say, but I'm sure Pyre did. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't happen on camera, it didn't happen. <laughs> Okay. You're awful snarky for a guy who was just about to get eliminated by his boss. Yeah. He wasn't going to eliminate me. He yes. always doing that because you all stopped me and were messing around with me. Uh, he's yeah. a hate-filled demon. Of course he's going to kill you, you dumbass. You were going to reveal... Even if we hadn't been able to connect the two of you, the fact that you got stopped by us made you a liability to his plans. Hence the enormous amount of demonic rage magic and he just pushed through the connection he had to you that helps him teleport you back so you know yeah he can he could have brought you to him but he also could have just snapped his fingers and you would I have think turned Pyre, to dust I think Pyre is going to be fine if the brightest flame burns quickest this joker is going to be around for a long time look at that you found a way to connect it to your fastness one yeah. track mind. Venturia will at this point step forward and say, if I were you, I would stop talking if you don't want me to crush your skull. I'm going to go get that glass of water and just slowly, <laughs> occasionally drip someone just to like hear it sizzle. All right, guys, enough of this. We've got other things to do. Um, Bowman, will you get in touch with Daedalus or somebody else with the Freedom League and have him come pick up Pyre? There's no, he's not going anywhere. Nightfire can't pull him to him and that's a good thing. We can put him into. We can take him into custody, and but he can't be in a bother anymore. We can get on with the rest of our <sighs> quest yeah. to figure out these bloodstones. I'm on it. Uh, he's gonna step out of the room to make that call because he also wanted to call Sophie. <laughs> <laughs> if she's still awake. <laughs> she's not got you blocked. <laughs> oh, oh. I don't think I'm that far yet. Or it probably means I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow, she left me at red. I wonder what that means. <laughs> <laughs> I guess she is sleeping. It was an accident. She rolled over and pressed the button when she was asleep. That's why it happened. Yeah. <laughs> um, Pyre will be chur will be surly, but he will uh, he will not try to escape or fight back or anything like that. Um, I, there's, you know, four other heroes in the room <laughs> to stop him. I usually and one go of them, before. and one of them, you know, bashed his fire face in with a friggin' uh, parking, parking meter. meter. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love that. You gonna go pick yeah. up all the quarters that fell out? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? It's not a quarter meter anymore. It's one of those digital ones where you have to use your credit card. Ugh. Or oh. an app. <laughs> um, so Bowman, you go out in the hallway. You give Daedalus a call. Um, he says, "Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll send Thunderbolt over to pick him up right away." Okay, thanks. Yeah, is everything okay right down there? Uh, not exactly. I have a whole situation that I need to update you on, but right now is not the time. I'll meet you as soon as possible. Okay. Keep me in the loop about what the uh, what the Freedom League Dark is up to. Is that what we're calling it now? <laughs> I seem to have received memes in my uh, Discord between sessions. <laughs> yeah, I muted that channel because I kept getting notifications when I was on patrol. Ruins the whole stealth factor. <laughs> bling, bling. <laughs> um, yeah, we can make some time to talk whenever you need to. Fletch, just let me know. Will do. And then he'll, uh, yeah, he's going to ring up Sophie um, for a couple of things. Unless she doesn't answer, in which case he'll try to meet with her tomorrow. She will answer. Uh, so he'll start with, hey, it's me. Uh, are you back home yet? Are you okay? Yeah, yeah, the cab just dropped me off. All right. Yeah, sorry about having to get out of there. I mean, again, Arrow Guy said not to go back in the building because there was a whole bunch of supervillains, and I mean, I had to leave the car behind, so. Oh, that's too bad. Hopefully they don't tow your Lamborghini or whatever it was. 
it was a Ferrari, but that's beside the point. <laughs> I actually just, well, first off, I wanted to make sure you were okay, but since you are, I also wanted to ask, since you've been meeting with everyone else at the project, I was wondering if you ran into a man by the name of Emmett Snyder. You got any vibes from him? Yeah, yeah, uh, Emmett's, uh, he's the guy that DaCosta has uh, overseen a lot of the, uh, a lot of the construction. Um, Emmett's given us the money, but he, he, you know, he, or not, um, sorry, Mr. DaCosta, Frank, he, um, he's bankrolling everything, but he's not taking a real close personal interest in what's going on. Emmett's been sort of the guy on the ground, uh, working with the construction crews and approving permits and getting everything going through. Why? What's up? I just like to get a background on people that I'm working with. Uh, I wanted to get your opinion because I trust, well, I trust your judgment of character. I mean, he's uh, he's kind of a good old boy, I guess. Uh, he's kind of a kind of a hick, kind of a. I use the term "good old boy" a little derogatively, I guess. Um, it's a little handsy every now and then. I have to put him in his place. Hmm. Do you want me to talk to him about that for you? No, no, I don't need you to just win my battles for me, Fletch. I can handle it. Oh, I didn't mean. Right. Okay. All right, I'll I'll let you get some rest. It's been a long night. Um, I'll see you tomorrow. We can uh, catch up on you know work stuff. Yeah, I'll check my calendar. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'll ch check mine <laughs> as well. She's she's gone. She hung up already. I would really rather fight the fact of war again. <laughs> and he'll just return to the room. Davey heard everything. <laughs> oh no, that's the worst one. <laughs> Omen comes back in the room, and Resident's gonna kind of give him that uh, quirked eye. Like she she knows something's emotionally off with him, and she's just gonna be like, "Everything okay?" Yeah, everything's good. Um, just you know, contact your data list. He'll send Thunderbolt. We'll wrap this guy up, and then we can get to some actual work. Okay. When Bowman says Thunderbolt, the chariot in the corner just groans. Oh no. Because <laughs> the last, you know, interaction she had with Thunderbolt was their not date. Oh, also, uh, Jonesy, thank you for subscribing again. Who do you want to give your hero point to? I'm thinking Bowman's going to need it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. Bowman, so you get... have been awarded a sympathy hero point. Hmm. So we get uh, Thunderbolt to show up and take Pyre off our hands. Yeah, Thunderbolt shows up. He um, he lands outside the penthouse, um, opens the window, and comes in. Oh, hey, Centuria. Hey. I didn't know you were out with them tonight. Uh, yep. Uh, yep. Did I miss anything exciting? Looks like you got a, a fourth of the factor four. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I um I hit him with a um with a um a, a parking. Of course you did. That's resourceful. <laughs> yeah. You're lucky to be alive. He kind of goes over and grabs Pyre by his scruff and lifts him up. You have no idea. He really doesn't. The resident did some. Epic hero work back there, so hmm. yeah. You guys are really gonna send me out of here with coin operated boy? Look at this guy. He doesn't even have a body. Uh, then you guys should get along swimmingly. I have a body. It's just made of flame, much like his body's made of electricity. So yeah, he's got a mouth on him. Just filter it out. <laughs> the, That's what the, I've been doing. The look on his face is like I hadn't considered that before. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we got a good place um, up at Blackstone for him. I'll, I'll take him down. Appreciate it. And uh, Centurio, we should uh, we should talk later. Are you sure? 
Uh, you... The resident is going to turn and look at Centuria and go. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. And they'll fly away. <laughs> Fire. <laughs> okay. Um... Centuria avoids all eye contact with Dave at this point. <laughs> <laughs> he gets that. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. So That's kind of that funny. He has a girlfriend. You have a boyfriend. I don't have a boyfriend, Davey. <laughs> oh, she's talking to the doll again. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't good. Well, the doll proved uh, useful tonight, so well, maybe we'll just let it slide for now. I oh, like Arrow Guy. He likes you, Bonnie. Oh, I didn't know you could hear me. <laughs> you can hear everything. Okay, now let's, uh, <laughs> that's just disturbing. Let's try to focus up. Um, <laughs> this, <laughs> this building, uh, where Nightfire has made his home, uh, it's managed by a man by the name of Emmett Snyder, uh, middle management kind of guy, works for DaCosta Construction. Uh, I haven't met him personally, but he might be a person of interest in this case if we're not leaving for the Arctic or wherever we're going to go collect the rest of those stones right now. Well, there was all that trouble in the... Yeah. Well, crazy. Well, not crazy. They're just misdirected people here on the south side. There might be some connections, but I'd have to investigate. Well, I mean, we shouldn't just leave if Nightfire's influence is doing something here, right? People will die. Then I'll see what I can figure out from the building right now. And if I can't get anything useful, I'll talk to the man himself. Overdrive? How, yeah. how quick can you scout out the south side and find if there's any hot spots? Quicker than last time. <laughs> Is he just runs, runs down the building. Yeah. As Overdrive runs away, oh Lord. Okay. Um, Davy says, Quick, grab Bow Guy! Grab him how? Just keep him safe! And explosions begin to rock the south side. As the explosions start, Centuria like tackles Bowman to the ground, <laughs> covering her, covering him with her body before she hears the explosion. <laughs> and uh, the building that you all are in does not explode, but the building next door does, and all the glass shatters uh, around where you all are standing. Um, oh jeez, we're gonna enter a skill challenge. Lord. As the group splits up to uh, go uh, deal with this situation. So, Overdrive, you were running out first. Where do you want to go? What do you want to do? Uh, well, I was going to scout, but if explosions are rocking the south side, that's really super bad. Um, I am much faster now than I was before, so I will pour on that extra speed. Uh, and attempt to use my speed weight to nab as many people in harm's way as I can get. Awesome. Um, so, let me see here. Ooh, too many tabs. Okay, so... Hmm. Give me a speed check. Okay, yeah, I just was trying to find how far... So I can go 250 miles in a round, so I'm hoping that can cover most of the explosion area. Um, yeah. A speed <laughs> check. And the magic base says 24, which is really sad considering my ranks and speed right now. <laughs> hmm. I wonder why I can't see your roll. Hover what? over the hover over the number. No, I can't. I can't see the result either. Let me. Oh. Wait, no, the, hey, it looks weird. There's like a. Yeah, it looks different. Did they update this? Or something? As far as we can tell, yes, the sheet has been updated in Roll20. Well, like, my, my result check's got the, like, almost looks like a, an official, like, uh, handbook kind of code. Like, it's not quite that 
circuit board pattern. It's in 3E, but it's a very, very snazzy check there. Hmm. Can everybody else see it? Yeah. Yep. I can see it. Yeah. Ooh, the GM is blocked. Haha, -ha, you're in timeout. <laughs> okay, now I can see it. I had to log out and log back in. <laughs> I thought he was going to get away with a lot of stuff there. I'm going to it on again. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I like, uh, like, I mean, I got a 34. <laughs> yeah. yeah totally. That's 104. <laughs> wow, you got really 3, fast in power level 11. <laughs> um, where am I? Outline for the skill challenge. Boom. Uh, that is going to be one degree of success overdrive. I would also like you to roll a fortitude save. Oh, no. I was afraid you were going to say something like that. Alright, fortitude. And we're in an office building. Is the building next door to us an office building as well? Is it an apartment complex or uh it was also an an office building. Seventeen. You oh. know, I have decent modifiers. I'm a little alarmed at the girth of the or the the preponderance of single digit rolls on the dice in this game. <laughs> <laughs> you do have good numbers. Um, happens fifty percent of the time. Uh um, so far, it's 100% of the time. <laughs> so, you get a hero point overdrive. Oh, Lord. As you're racing through in the speedway, you notice that the fires of the explosions are not quite regular fire. It looks like they seem to be tinged with some kind of demonic energy oh, presence. No. And they seem particularly attracted to you. And every time the flames lick at you and they sort of tear into you, more of this black energy emerges from you and colors through the red streak of your super speed moving through. <laughs> Uh, is it, is it seem to be drawn to me and not the, the citizens in the speedway? It looks like you in particular. Okay, well that's good, but Be better me than them. Yeah, whatever demonic presence has created this hellfire seems to be attracted to the darkness inside you. Um, with a 17, you will be impaired. Oof. So minus two, right? Yep. As you're racing through the streets, uh, grabbing people, go ahead and describe the scene for me. Okay, so uh, faster, or twice as fast as before. Uh, Overdrive is racing through the south side. Um, the it's kind of hard to make out in the blur of his speedy travel, but that that speed wake aura is also uh, a little bit larger and stronger. Um, you know, so 3,200 pounds worth of people. Um, and of course, the these weird demonic flames are sort of tugging at him, and it's you know, sort of grimacing in pain as he tries to push through it. Uh, not a usual experience, but he's actually starting to sweat a little bit uh, as he's racing around. And once he's got his weight limit, he is going to run them out of the blast area and drop them off somewhere safe. Awesome. Well, yeah, 3,200 pounds of people is like 25 Americans, so that's a good deal. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. Um, yeah, who wants to go next? You can go. Go for it. Um, so I'm just, I, I need to do something. <laughs> yep, either an application of your powers or your skills, however you're trying to contribute to the catastrophe of the explosions going off. Uh, okay, so can I, like, see any bad people around? Uh, you don't see any bad people around. Okay, and this building is okay right now? Other than all the broken glass, yeah. Right, but are there people in the other building? Yes, there are. Okay, uh, I'll fly over there and try... To either rescue them or if I can if I can like hold up parts of the building that are going to collapse on them for them to escape I can do that perfect go ahead and give me a strength check check 29 oh yeah no big deal <laughs> and that actually gets the benefit of your power lifting as well which I think is another four points power lifting it might say enhanced strength. It's in your strength tricks. It's a new array that you have. Okay. I'll check. Help me, SOS. I got you, I got you. I send an SOS to the world. 
was thinking. Play that song on guitar. Didn't want to say it. I am unable to quit as I am currently too legit. Uh, actually, yeah, powerlifting six, so that kicks you up to thirty-five. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can lift two million five hundred thousand tons of weight. So yeah. I think I can do it. Then. Yeah, uh, thirty-five <laughs> is going to be three degrees of success. So let's yeah, just move Sokovia over here. <laughs> Um, so as you're doing that, Centuria, please go ahead and give me a toughness check, just as debris and fire and health, fire, corrupt, or, you know, washing over. 31. Oh, you're cool. You're fine. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You're in there, you're propping, go ahead and describe what's happening as you're assisting with this. So she gets into the building, well, she apologizes to Bowman first. She says, I thought you were about to get shot or something. I had no warning. And then flies off without him saying anything and um, gets over to the building just as like a big pillar is collapsing on one of the, on some of the people and she like holds it up like she, they do in really cool movies. Hmm. <laughs> just to protect them and let them get down the stairs before the rest of the building collapses in on them. Excellent. Um, that's Centuria. Mm -hmm. Who wants to go? Resonant, Mortis, or Bowman? Uh, I've uh, got an idea. I was gonna say I've got an idea, but Bowman, if you got one too. Sure. I mean, I was just gonna use a healthy application of arrows, but uh, go for it. I, I cast arrow. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to decide which one to use, actually, uh, but I think I'll start off with immediately addressing the fires. So while these weren't super effective earlier in the night, I'm gonna start with the foam arrows. Uh, probably gonna have to. Well. Yeah, I guess I'm just trying to visualize the space. Like, are the fires, like, all over the buildings? Are they on the lower floors? Uh, most of them are emerging from the bottom levels of the buildings and working their way up. They are spreading a lot faster than you're expecting them to, however. Okay, um, so I might need to swing Arrow out of here. I'm kind of imagining a whole thing where he's, like, swing Arrow out of the building, repels down to the bow cycle, which was brought along with the speedway before. And then from there, just like going down the street, firing either like, either like these foam arrows to try to mitigate some of the fires, or I guess sort of stunting his usual swinging arrow as like ropes to help hold up some debris, uh, to sort of like slow down that process uh, to help people get out. And then I don't know. I guess I'll make an archery check for that, and then try to figure out something for like actually helping people more directly. Yeah. But for great. now, I'm just trying to mitigate like the actual fires and damage. Awesome. Go ahead and make an archery check then. Okay, uh, so should I just use like my archery attack roll? Yeah, that's fine. Because I'm shooting a bow. Okay. Yeah. That's it. Twenty-one. Twenty-one. That is one degree of success. Please go ahead and describe what's going on. All right. So after that save, he sort of like. Uh, very much stealing this from the first Avengers movie. He will run out of the building, and as he does, he will turn and shoot a grapple arrow, like, upwards into, I guess, part of it that might be, like, well, that building was some damage, he'll just go, like, into the side of the building, and then from there he'll fall, and then the rappel will slow his fall down before he hits the ground, and then right when he detaches from the, uh, the line, he'll, like, land on the bow cycle, and then he's just, like, heading down the street, like, targeting the flames specifically, putting those out to create like a way of like some ways for people to get out of the burning buildings um all the while just trying to do, find people who are like expe especially traveling needs to like stop and help awesome. but for now just trying to like i don't know if these are like magic fires but for now he's trying to put out as many as he can please go ahead and give me a vehicles check Bowman. pretty good at vehicles uh, if i can find it 26. Hold, please. GM loading. GM loading. Happens when you get an old modem GM. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Is that Just AOL GM? on my way in real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Ba -dong, ba -dong, ka -ding. Um, Bowman, as you're driving on the bow cycle, um, putting out fires, shooting arrows around and around, uh, you feel the tires pop on the front, 
and you lose control of the motorcycle. Oh shoot! And uh, it kind of slams to the ground. You go as you go skating onto the asphalt for a moment, until a ninja appears. Yes, and, we've gone uh, full eighties. <laughs> and uh, he's gonna try to cut your head off with his katana. Whoa, whoa, whoa! That's not cool. Yeah, I'd rather that not happen to me. Uh, Seriously. Twenty-two to hit your parry DC. Parry DC is because that went up a smidge. Uh, well, it is sixteen. Oh, actually, no, wait, it's twenty-six. What am I, what am I talking about? It's twenty-six. The parry DC. Ooh, okay, you're good. <laughs> okay. Um, and it has been a long enough time since our last encounter that my one bruise is yes. faded away. Yep. Okay. So you kind of um, the motor the bow cycle kind of kicks out, slams down to the asphalt. This ninja comes out of the darkness and tries to push you forward into one of the burning buildings to engage you in a sword fight with the backdrop of the fire behind you because dramatic. Well, in that case, I'm <laughs> going to dramatically block it with the bow itself, using that mm. as a weapon. Excellent. And uh, you recognize him from the security footage from Freedom City University. This is Taquin, one of the homunculi. <laughs> Um, he's gonna say, you took something that doesn't belong to you. And ready an arrow, and I guess prepare for combat. <laughs> when you say that, he says, Roar! Oh, this is much better than the last guy. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so, uh, that brings us to Mortis and Resonant. Uh, Resonant's idea basically is to kind of begin floating out, and um, she can tell that the flames are unnatural, right? Yes. Yeah. Right, with her so... magic sense, she knows that this is hellfire. That's oh been gosh. Mixed with C four and other accelerants. She's like, I already felt all of this. This isn't good. Um, so she's gonna be looking. She's gonna be on the lookout for pockets of civilians, or any of the flames that are reaching to heights where they'll start knocking buildings down. And she's going to try to, since they're magically induced flames, uh, she's going to try to use her nullify ability to kind of put them out. So she's going to redraw on the diamond and uh, begin trying to snuff out the flames. Fair enough. All right. Let's roll me some... Uh... Let's see here. There it is. Oh, whoop. That is a 24. Uh, 24 is a degree of success. So, um, go ahead and describe how you're flying through the city and putting out these hellfires. Yeah, so it's a very slow, it's a very slow descent because Resonant does not fly very quickly. Uh, but it at least helps her get out and get focus more on civilians and she'll try to be putting out fires close to where civilians are at or again, where fires are reaching to the point that they're going to start, uh, making buildings topple over, which would cause collateral damage, um, which could be even worse than, you know, the building itself just collapsing in. So it should help the fire spread. So she's kind of like making a fire break almost, um, trying to keep it from getting any further out by keeping these buildings from collapsing and causing the fire to spread that way. Excellent. And Mortis. Uh, Mortis, uh, as soon as the explosion went off, Mortis uh, reflexively just became ghostly um, and will fly out of the building uh, that they're in and will quickly scan for any signs that there are civilians trapped within near flames or burning areas, especially if it looks like the way out is blocked for them. Awesome. Um, go ahead and give me a perception check. And I'll give you a plus two because you have the ability to sense souls. Uh, Mortis got a 15. Uh, 15 is not a degree of success. Um, if you would like to reroll, you always have that option. Um. Uh, he's going to keep looking, but other than that, uh, he's going to attempt to um, uh, sc 
dart you know, like literally flying through the buildings looking for people because he's got insubstantial so he's going to be ghostly um, and as he's doing it he's looking for um, signs of that and any signs of any kind of um, possibly any devices that may not have gone off awesome so. yeah so as Mortis is sort of flying through the hellfire is a little overwhelming to your spiritual sense um and you get the sense that whoever has caused this has specifically tried to mask their activities from you in particular. Like, I don't know who it is. <laughs> wow. Uh, back to Overdrive. Alright, well, this is a challenge, so... I'm just to be my dead horse here. Um... As I was racing around, did it seem like were sprinkler systems on? Were they having any effect? Uh, it didn't look like water was having any effect in putting the fires out. Hmm. I don't know what I would roll for this. Maybe an expertise... Journalism. I find me a nice big old church that might have some holy water in a basin. Hmm. You know what? I would let you roll an expertise journalism for that, or um, if you have expertise local, like current events, or expertise mm, Freedom City. It's journalism. Yeah, I think journalism and current events kind of go hand in hand. So. Okay. A twenty-two. That is a degree of success. Okay. Overdrive the journalist. <laughs> um, Very lowest lane of you. Yeah, you do know where a church is. Okay, so I will zip in there, apologize to uh, the minister or priest or whichever denomination. I'm, I really need this, and I will uh, take off with the basin and hopefully, like I don't know, in in my vast <laughs> travels, I I assume I did successfully. Uh, oh. Sorry, that would be a 20 because I'm impaired. Sorry, I forgot that. Uh, 20 um, is just what you need for a success. So you're oh, okay. okay. Um, would I have seen, or like, does there seem to be like a, a center or, or a, a, a hot spot for this fire? I like, I'd rather than randomly throw the holy water, like try and drop it off at a strategic uh, place or uh -oh. can someone else figure it out as their skill challenge and point me in that direction? Yeah, I think if somebody wants to help you with that, that would be a good idea. So I'll call over the comms, you know, point me at the epicenter. I got a special dose. I guess with that, I can just alter my course and go straight up and fly and see if I can see where the, uh, where the center is. Yeah, um, go ahead and make an expertise a cult check for me. Jonesy. Eighteen. Well, I was going to give you a plus two for familiarity with the target, so that's a twenty. That's a success. Oh, um, hey, I'm sorry. Uh, is my impaired? Is that an affliction? Should I get a? You should get a fortitude save. Yep. Okay. I forgot that. All right, so minus two from this. Ugh, I sure hope it isn't uh, progressive. <laughs> it is <laughs> not progressive. So Woo! You're okay. So I'm still impaired, but that's as bad as it gets. Um, but Mortis, with a success, you fly up and you notice that the explosives aren't just randomly placed around set the south side. It looks like it looks like with your occult check that Nightfire and his minions have taken great pains to set bombs in such a way that they are burning a giant cross into the south side. Um, the sort of crossroads of the cross, the middle of the T-section, that, that is where you're guessing the epicenter of the devices are. Sure, Overdrive. Let, hang a life to Lincoln and keep going. You're going to go straight to the center of the burning cross. You got it, Spooky. I'm on it. <sighs> so want to kill this guy. We'll get him. We'll get him. 
Um, so that was Mortis and Overdrive. Who wants to go next? Bowman is locked in Mortal Kombat with, <laughs> with a homunculus. <laughs> I think that's a good next. I think that's a good next scene. All right. I mean, I'll take it. So yeah, the Go hellfire is raging around you. Takwin has a scimitar drawn. He is eyeing you, uh, hungrily. Now it's a scimitar. It says scimitar on the write up. I'm gonna say it's a katana. Yeah, it's cooler. You can't just change the sword halfway through. Um. But it's in his picture. <laughs> So more importantly, are there still civilians in the buildings nearby? Give me a perception check. That's a crit. That is a crit. Um, so Bowman, you can definitely hear the sound of people in distress in the buildings on either side of you. Uh, where the giant flaming silhouette of both of you is being cast from. Okay, this guy is essentially a construct, so I'm sure some of these aren't going to work on him. I can't save people if I get stabbed in the butt by a sword, so I'm going to fire a bola arrow at this guy. Uh, and hopefully that will slow him down enough that I can go help people. Come so, at me. <laughs> bola arrow. That's a DC 19. Uh, 19 is not going to work. Well, it's a 21 to hit. Or, well, yeah, 21 yeah, to hit. Uh, okay. 21 is not going to hit, sorry. Huh. The bow arrow flies out and he slices it in half with his sword. Alright, uh, shoot. <laughs> I was kind of banking on that. I don't know. He, does, he doesn't seem like affected at all by the fire. No. No. Um, I don't know. Are we doing this like as combat? Is this like? Am I just treating this as like a combat round? Yeah, pretty much. You can move if you want. I'm gonna move. You know what? I'm gonna move towards one of the buildings, and I'm just gonna spend a hero point to go again in this combat round. Uh, to fire another arrow, but I'm just going to do, again, another foam arrow into one of the fires here. Uh, sort of like, I'm imagining there's like maybe like a shot, like a front of an apartment building, like a shot front or something mm -hmm. that has fire around it. A bodega. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Um, just going to fire something into there. And yeah. So I guess I will spend that hero point. Uh, right in the middle there. And yeah, another check just to get a, another another foam arrow in there. They're they're getting some good use tonight. So uh, it's only a sixteen. Uh, that is not a degree of success. Uh, can't afford to be here without a hero point, just in case I need one to live. So <laughs> I guess I'm going to have to suffer the consequences. Yeah, so you just fire the foam arrow into the fire. Um, the foam expands, and then it's immediately consumed by hellfire, and it seems to make the fire much larger than that no dig it. And, uh... Um, I guess I'll just quickly radio to the team, <laughs> uh, just update them that there's more civilians near my position. Copy that. Well, Takwin's gonna come over there and give you what for. He's gonna try. Ugh. I a 14 to hit, so he is not going to be real for So yeah, over the comms, you all probably hear the sound of, like, clanging as he's attacking, and Bowman is still just, like, going between shooting an arrow and then blocking with the bow as he's sort of, like, backing closer towards the building. Um, yeah, that's his current situation. Yeah, he's going to use, hand. um... He's going to go fatigue. And he's going to try and faint you, um, Bowman. I uh, don't know what I have to roll for that. Uh, give me an insight, deception, or will check, whichever is higher for you. Insight, deception, or will. Okay. Insight is there. Uh, deception is there. Uh, will is. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, you are not taken in by his deception. Aha. So, epic sword fight going on, epic sword bow fight. Fire all around. It's wonderful. Centurion resident. Do you need a hand bowman? These people need a hand more than me. Get them out first. I'll take care of this. Okay. <laughs> I'm bowman. Oh, man. <laughs> um... All right, can I can I make an expertise magic check to see if there is a way we can douse all of this at once? Kind of like I know what Overdrive's attempting to do with the uh, the holy water, but can I use that to determine if that's going to be enough or if we need to kick it up a notch somehow? Uh, go ahead and give me an expertise magic check. It is a thirty-two. Ooh. You know, you think you are going to have to take it up a notch if you want to put out all of the fire at once. Um, okay. You think if you get your hands on the holy water, you can come up with some way of uh, of doing that. Perfect. Overdrive, I'll meet you at the uh, I'll meet you at the center. Do not toss the uh, holy water until I get there and give it a boost. You got it. And I'll uh, fly out in his direction. Awesome. Centuria. Um, are there any screaming people around me, or can I hear any screams in this building? Uh, no, it looks like the people uh, were able to evacuate after you held the building up last round. Okay, um, she is going to take the pillar that she's holding, um, and slam it down onto the ninja. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> so do you want me to do an unarm? Yeah, you can do a heavy <laughs> blow for that if you want. Uh, okay. Ow. I got a 20. My bones! All of my bones! <laughs> uh, 20. Oh my god, 20 does hit. Oh. Hits the DC parry DC. 31. His dodge DC is better than his parry DC for some reason. DC 31? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm just a ninja. <laughs> uh, <ooh. laughs> I rolled an I 11. Mean, sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was a homunculi there. <laughs> what I happened, Centuria? <laughs> First rule of Dice Club, don't talk about <laughs> dice. <laughs> Um, so she literally just, like, listens, makes sure there's nobody in the building anymore, and when th she is sure that there's no one, she rips the pillar out and just, like, comes down to where Bowman is and just slams it onto the ninja. <laughs> like a baseball bat, just like last time. Awesome sauce. He is crushed like a bug. <laughs> oh, man, we get, like, a face full of homunculi. <laughs> it's a lot of clay. They're all made oh, out of yes. clay. Mm -hmm. Are you okay, Fletch? I'm good. Just get those people out of here. <laughs> okay. And then she'll fly off in the direction of people. This is why they didn't do crossovers with Supergirl and Green Arrow very often. <laughs> <laughs> There's a small part of them that wanted that ninja fight. <laughs> the lighting is perfect for this. <laughs> Quit playing with that ninja. We got work to do. <laughs> How do we tell Can you I keep them? Putting your choice away. <laughs> oh. All right. Uh, back to overdrive. I am waiting for resonant to arrive before doing anything rash. Whoever wants to go next. Um, I'll go. Uh, I'm going to fly down to Bowman. Told me there were civilians in trouble where he was at, so I'm going to put on all the speed and take off that direction um, to fly into the building and get those people out. Excellent. So depending on how the flames are, if I can get them out by flight, then great. If not, I can just, uh, I will uh, step across the threshold and take them out that way if necessary. Awesome. Um, what do you want to roll for this? Uh, well, 
I've got... How many rings do I have? Movement, let me double check. Since I'm using my movement power, it makes sense to use one of my movement powers as the, the ranks for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So... Should be... I can't find it. I think it's eight. You could take him through the haunted lands. That'd be fun. That's kind of what I was thinking. The uh, uh, teleporting mm -hmm. them right through the. If they're surrounded by flames, I can just teleport right out through the. Mm -hmm. And that would be a twenty-three. That's a success. Um, what happens, Mortis? So I fly into the building, and as I fly into the building, because I'm still ghostly, uh, a couple of. The uh, timbers and stuff, the supports fall down, they're all on fire, so we're actually trapped and we can't get out past the flame. So I, I literally put my hands around the group and my cape goes out, and as I do, I actually pull them into uh, the, the nearby reflection of the underworld, uh, the Haunted Lands, and uh, for a brief second, and then as I step back across, pull them back across uh, to the physical world, we're outside of the building. Mortis has saved you. Enjoy your therapy. <laughs> I'm scarred for life. <laughs> Mommy, was there was that the afterlife? <laughs> Is there a god? <laughs> Is Mortis God? <laughs> uh, yeah, because the the when Mortis steps through, it's basically like kind of a dark reflection, like a negative uh, mm -hmm. version of the physical world, like looking at a photo, like a photo negative of, of the the round lands that we're in. Oh, that's so cool. I want an animated show of our antics. Really? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, good job, Mortis. Uh, we've got Centuria, Bowman, and Resonance still. I, I, I'll go to kind of help out so that Overdrive gets a chance to do what he's going to do. So she's going to, Resonance going to show up and she's going to basically say, here, uh, let me take a look at that. And she's going to, with the diamond, she's going to thrust her hands into the holy water. And she's going to spend a hero point to boost her level for the for her uh, what you call it for her nullify. Hmm. But I have untapped potential, so this ups it by three, not two. Uh oh. So basically, I'm pouring uh, as resonance doing this. Some of that golden master mage energy kind of pours out and boosts the uh, the nullify capability. So I'm kind of infusing the holy water with the nullify to basically let overdrive then go sprinkle it across the entire south side. Awesome. Uh, go ahead and give me a nullify check. I will, once I give you the hero point. There you go. <laughs> give it to me. Cool. Hey, gotta use the cool stuff that I get, right? That's true. That's a 31 because of the plus three. Oh my lord. All right, well, that gets you all over the threshold for succeeding at the skill challenge. So, um, Resonant and Overdrive, do you want to sort of describe how you put out the fires with this enhanced holy water? Yep. So, sure. Resonant's hands and her eye, her eyes are already that pearlescent with the her, her hair being white because she's pulling on the diamond, but all of a sudden there's this really quick uh, golden glow that just kind of encapsulates her and then heads down to her hands and hits the holy water and it just kind of sits there and she's going to look up at overdrive and just say go and she, as she pulls her hands back out the the diamond powered uh basically just disappears from her body her hair goes back to being that walnut brown her eyes kind of roll back up into her head just a little bit from the exertion of doing this and she kind of se steps back a little woozy overdrive will give his best devil may care grin and he will zip off and begin tipping the bowl behind his head into his speed wake, which just sort of spreads it out like a fan. And so there's this shimmering aura just trailing after him as he zips around the center point of the cross, spiraling outward. Uh, and it, you know, creates this sort of fog that swallows up the hellfire. And it's like, the, it's almost like a, this little void that appears at the center point of the, of the hellfire cross. And then there's this sort of 
pop of displaced air, and the whole thing just collapses. Beautiful. And this holy water fog washes over the south side. Way less instructive than my initial idea, so yay! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my, my idea was to have Kevin go run through the uh, speed wake by the, the river and just bring a whole bunch of water behind him <laughs> and just have us bless it as he goes by. Wow. <laughs> hey, you priest, bless this! <laughs> Stick your hand out and bless as it goes by. <laughs> That's how it works, right? <laughs> Um, what condition is the bow cycle in right now? Uh, fuckled is the word I would use to describe it. <laughs> what? Oh. <laughs> uh, okay, that to... that's going to be a problem for later, but right now, uh, Bowman is going to, like, immediately swing away and go towards Sophie's place. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Uh, so Bowman's gonna swing away off to off towards Sophie place, Sophie's place in the south side. Are you sneaking away uh, into the dark like Batman and not telling anybody where you're going? Pretty much. Sounds um, about, sounds about right. Yeah, I'm gonna do it stealthily. Like I'll, hmm. <laughs> I don't know if anyone's if anyone asks on comments, I'll probably reply. But he's not gonna say anything immediately. He's just gonna be like, he was fighting a ninja. The ninja got splattered and the fire got put out. Citizens seem safe, so. Uh, Next priority is Sophie, and then getting the bow cycle out of there. But first off, awesome. So, Centuria date uh, Bowman just disappears. Do I just watch him like walk away, or is he just gone? Uh, rules don't check, Bowman. Oh, okay. <laughs> See if he actually Batman's away. It's a twenty-seven. You can roll a perception check if you want, Centuria. Can I roll one for me and Daisy? Yeah, of course. Ooh. Oh, oh God, on, Centuria AC, nothing. <laughs> uh, Davy though, they also didn't see anything. <laughs> <laughs> see, that would have worried me. <laughs> Perhaps the holy water mist is causing Davy to melt a little bit. Ooh. No. <laughs> it's okay, I regenerate. <laughs> 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 oh yeah, he does. That was his first superpower. Yeah. <laughs> that we're aware of. Yeah. Stop, Andy. Stop. <laughs> Sorry, boy. I told Catherine earlier that Davy was the soul of Tracy, trying oh, to get revenge oh. on Overdrive. <laughs> I said throw the whole ball away. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> That should be the ongoing poll. What is Davy? What's his deal? Who's Davy a synth? <laughs> is Davy a synth? Okay, yeah, so he just disappears, and I'm like, oh no, I lost him. You don't think you splattered him, do you? Check no, under the ninja! No. no, I talked to him afterwards. He said he was okay. You talked to a lot of people who weren't there. Wow. She'll just glare at the dog. <laughs> Pull it out of the pocket, glare at it, put it back. <laughs> like who, Davy? Not me. Then who? Remember in the other universe? She just sticks it back in the pocket <laughs> and walks back over to everybody else. Oh. Well, we can't take back karaoke can. night. <laughs> I told you not to talk about that. Karaoke night. It was a moment of desperation. Oh, no. <laughs> yes, we all have the karaoke horror stories somewhere in our life. Even Centurion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, so she'll walk over to where like Resonant and Dave are. Like, um, I don't know where Bowman went. Oh, hey. Yeah, we are sure. Or a teammate. He didn't get splatted, did he? Is it, um, no, yeah. no, no. I'm sure he's off brooding somewhere. I definitely talked to him before I did the splatting. Dave, did you happen After. to see anywhere, anything other than the fires? Like what other, I hate to use the word hot spot now, but <laughs> any other? Uh, well, I caught my, my scout and kind of got bushwhacked by the fact that the neighborhood blew up and there was fires everywhere. Um, okay. Well, we need to, we need to figure out who's taking advantage of this. 
Well, I, I mean, I hate to state the obvious, but uh, a giant bird across and south side? Uh, kind of a no-brainer. I meant the groups that are taking advantage of this uh, to, do, to do things. We know who's already behind all this. Yeah. It's obviously okay. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, I knew white Jesus was going to be a problem. <laughs> Welcome right, to the Untold so... Stories Project. We are not spiritual here. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> so, Dave, can you reconnoiter again? Uh, I'll try, but the last time I did, the neighborhood blew up. Um, <laughs> Avery will have to sort of like look around. Okay, let's try this again. <laughs> Off I go. All right, please give me this a is... speed check. You sure you want a perception check? It's good. Was there a specific building that was in the center point of this? Um, if there was, it has burned down. For the speed check, I got the 29. 29. So, Overdrive, you go into action. You start running all over the place, basically. And uh, you can't seem to find any groups marshalling out to take advantage of the chaos. You do find uh, first responders um, heading out to do, do their thing. Um, okay. You do Continue notice the that there is a distinct lack of power to most of the buildings on this part of Southside, except for a couple on the western portion of Southside. Lack of power. Yeah, it looks like something has knocked the power out. Uh, is that something with quickness and technology I can check out? Sure. So I got quickness 12 now, so... This 10 was the cut. Uh, technology. Well, well, Dave's out running around. I'm going to pull out my phone and, and see if I can Google yeah. em Emery and see what social media... Like, what's this guy's public persona? Uh, mm -hmm. Um, Emmett, you mean Emmett Snyder? Yes, yeah, sorry, sorry, yeah, Emmett. Yeah. Um, so, Mortis, while you're uh, investigating, will you give me an investigation check? I got a or, 24 on the tech. Um, overdrive with your 24 on your technology check, you're able to determine that it seems the majority of the power problems are related to the massive explosions and the fires that were caused. Will I say the, explosion, the explosives were placed in a place that would knock out the power? Yes, you're able to determine that. Is this... Um, hmm. I'll, I'll radio that in, and, and then get to see what the team thinks. Yeah. You also on. notice that all of the buildings that were sort of the flashpoints for the explosions were decaustic construction buildings. Oh, I will definitely pass that along to the rest of the team. Uh, Mortis, with an 11 on your investigation check, you are able to determine that Emmett Snyder's... Uh, his presence online is... You find a couple of um, couple of accounts. You do find his like LinkedIn that's related to DaCosta. Um, nothing too controversial on there, but you are able to find on his whatever the Freedom City equivalent of Facebook is. Um, you're able to find that he definitely reposts a lot of things that would be considered fringe conspiracy theories and right wing talking points and just anything up to the line of being. Um, racially motivated and uh, nationalistic and fascistic. Um, he doesn't have any posts up from today, uh, but you do see that he is in a couple of groups that you're sort of cycling through. Uh, some of them have private memberships, but there is a public group talking about um, talking about the old guard of Freedom City and how life was better, you know, in the good old days. And it looks like there is an address where there are several meetings of this group that have taken place that is in Southside. You know, that might have been written by Next Gen. They really got hosed from 2nd to 3rd edition, I gotta tell you. <laughs> how do you really feel about that, Kevin? <laughs> um. Bowman was in Next Gen. He's doing okay. Oh, uh, but he was Not in the Freedom way I League by, He was in Freedom League by second edition. Oh. Seven, Bolt, Megastar, it didn't go well for them. Third edition was not kind. 
I was seven's... less kind to seven. <laughs> seven's fine. We'll we'll make sure seven's fine. We can fix this. Um, what'd you find, Mortis? Uh, it looks like uh, so. Uh, Emery, uh, what's his name? Emmett. Emmett. Uh, Snyder. Is kind of a jerk, um, and he's borderline hate group guy. Uh, he probably wouldn't be if it wasn't for the fact he's got a public persona. Um, but it seems that he's been meeting with several other like-minded individuals, possibly, here on the south side, over on 12th Street. Yeah, it's actually a warehouse. The address seems I think, to be. I think we should go check it out. Okay. Yeah. Bowman, if you're hearing this, we're gonna meet there. Hopefully, you're okay. I'm good. Just need to fix up the bike. Just, I'll meet you at the location. Okay. All right, arrow right. guy. <laughs> That's me. I have no idea what I could do with that bike. <laughs> I don't know how I'm gonna get it out of there. You um, you're making your way over to Sophie's house at the moment. Yep. Literally could have asked me, but now it's too late. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> you could have relied on his friends. <laughs> <laughs> Character flaw. <laughs> I'll deal you a hero point for your insistence on going your own way. Um, so Bowman, you head over to where Sophie lives. It's a very nice apartment complex on the south side. Um, it looks like this area was sort of untouched by the explosions, uh, but the fires did rage a little bit and there is some power outages going on. Uh, you see Sophie is out on the street in, um, in sweats and a uh, hoodie. Looks like she is trying to coordinate uh, relief efforts with volunteers and stuff like that. Okay. Um... Yeah, he just wanted to check if she was okay. Uh, so yeah, he's, he's gonna just like, I guess, perch on a nearby building. Just kind of like crouch there, looking down, watching her for a moment. Um, you know, feeling this swell of just like more admiration for her as he sees her, like even in this situation, just like helping people seems to be her immediate priority. So he just kind of, yeah, he just, he just, he, he, he respects her even more than he already does. <laughs> Uh, obviously can't call her because it'll be weird if Fletch knows that there was just like a fire here where he doesn't live in this neighborhood. Uh, he's smart enough for that, but yeah, he's probably going to be there, like, just watch her for like a minute or two and then decide, I gotta go figure out how to move my bike. <laughs> and then he will, um, I guess if everyone's immediately going to that address, he will, uh, God, you can't leave it there. <laughs> you can call Daedalus. We'll call Thunderbolt. <laughs> um... <laughs> Come on, you need you, you need you need a young lad to steal um, the wheels off of your bike <laughs> oh, so, that, <laughs> so that you can be uh, you can get a uh, an angsty, obnoxious teen sidekick. Do you really want a Jason Bolt. Todd Arsenal Bolt. Jonesy? Is that what you want? <laughs> His name could be Bolt. Yes, and he uses a crossbow. Yeah, I was gonna say he uses a hand crossbow. Yep, yep. Oh, yeah, yeah. They start off calling him Bolty, but he hates it. <laughs> Oh no! That is so wrong. Call me oh, Speedy no. one more time, Speedy old man. Would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I, I was just visualizing that. And yes, that would be awesome. I don't know if I get back there and I see some young wayward hood look stealing the wheels <laughs> off the post cycle, then I don't know what'll happen. Uh, but if I do not, then he'll try to find some way to conceal it for the moment, and then go to meet everyone else. So I guess, yeah, first thing is head back to where the bow cycle crashed. Note to self, find hoodlum to steal <laughs> wheels on bow cycle. <laughs> um. It's Roy Todd, <laughs> the local hoodlum. Uh, I like Jason Harbor better. <laughs> That's a better name. Roy Todd. Uh, um. Todd. <laughs> um, but Bowman, you do return to the motorcycle. You see that it's in mostly one piece, and you are able to. Uh, um, you're able to at least hide it somewhere. You're not going to be able to do a field repair on it at the moment. Looks like it's going to take some some real TLC to get back up and running again. 
right. Um, so yeah, just get like, like behind like a dumpster or something, just somewhere where people can't see it. Hmm. Um, if there's a tarp around, use that. But <laughs> I mean, there's um, not one in the bow cycle already for just such an occasion. Yeah, I didn't have room with the caltrops. <laughs> well, that's a feature he didn't have. You know, yeah, I didn't. I didn't consider it might just fall apart on me. I need that. <laughs> I need to buy that cloaking device extra. <laughs> um, so, yeah, no, he'll uh, he'll get it hidden away and then swing off towards the warehouse. Yeah, go ahead and give me a stealth check just to just to see how well it's hidden. Absolutely. I'll give you a plus two for having a tarp. Well, see, now I'm torn between hiding it really well and not. Yeah, I'm just kind of like trying to predict what would be more interesting in the future. Do I want to take this failure? <laughs> uh, the 16 is not great. Is it worth a hero point? Probably not. I can use that in combat to like actually save some people. And I'm in a rush, so it would make sense if I don't hide it very well. So, I don't know where that's going to go, but he's hiding it to the best of his abilities. Awesome. It's got a tracker on it, right? It does. And has an alarm. FYI. Mm. <laughs> Alright. Then you go swinging off towards that location. And as the group is preparing to convene upon this warehouse location, I think it's a good time for us to take our break. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get up, stretch our legs. Um, go ahead and grab a snack, grab some water, whatever you need to do, and we will see you in just a few minutes. Indeed. Yes. We shall return. Right. That's a threat and a promise. <laughs> <laughs>